Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another gigantic mining vehicle, and this one is exceptionally impressive with its sheer scale. So this is called the Miner TS-8000, which is this glorious thing sitting right behind me and right above me. So this features one hell of a lot of rotors, hinges and pistons to make it all work, and of course make it twiddle around and do other bits and bobs on the main body. It features one hell of a lot of drill heads so you can drill up a nice lot of stuff, it does use a few mods here and there such as the expanded drill radius, so when you do drill something with this, it's going to be a gigantic hole. We've also got a fancy cockpit to actually drive it around, lots of cameras you can see what's going on with it. You can just see in the distance there the sheer number of pistons to make this all work. If we come across the main body, we have a gigantic interior that's bigger than most bases that I've ever showcased on this channel, so you can if you want to refit all of that to actually make it into a mobile base. We've also got one hell of a lot of doorways to get in and out of this thing, so if there's ever an emergency, for whatever reason, you have a quick way to get in and out. And we do have a piston system to make sure you can lock it down in place, so it doesn't wobble around, and of course to make it less tempting for Clang to blow it up randomly. We also have a bunch of Amsterdam process pause and backwards to help move this thing around, which will be very much needed when it's all filled up with resources. We do have plenty of space on the top here, so you can turn this into a landing pad if you want to. Currently we've got a bunch of rotating fans made out of steel blocks on a rotor, but you could always flatten this area out, make it into a docking pad, and actually have ships come up to this and unload stuff. But speaking of unloading stuff, it gets even more impressive with the drills at the front, let's just go around over to here. This can open up, and on the inside it's going to reveal to us a bunch of connectors, so you can just split this open and cough out any kind of stuff you don't want, such as stone. Just putting the camera all the way through, we will get a better look at this, we actually go through all the controls, but there's all of our connectors, we actually dump everything out. So anyway, what we're going to do, is I'll just come like this, press F10, go through the spawn menu. I'm not going to go around the outside, because what I just did right there is going to be, well, I'm counting as the outside. Then we're going to go around on foot until I get to the cockpit, drive it around, and I'll show you what it does. Of course, you can always jump ahead using the chapters to the section where I'm actually using this thing. I always leave chapters in its strategic places, so you can skip out stuff that you don't want to watch. As for the actual size of this thing, this thing is 11,419 large blocks. Using the Derek Block number 2, Sparks of the Future, Warfare 2, Heavy Industry, or Tom Toms, and Derek Block number 1 DLC packs. We see here nice sort of important information about it, such as the scripts it uses, and of course the mods it uses, and most importantly that this thing was created for creative mode. But what we'll do is just copy this clipboard so you can see the PCU limit. Might have to zoom this all the way away. There we go, it's 67,690 for the PCU, which is a hell of a lot for a mining vehicle, although not that much when you actually look at the sheer number of pistons, rotors and hinges on this thing, I was expecting it to be well above 100,000. Anyway, like I said, grabbing hold of my character, it's time to have a little walk around this thing to see what it's like. Just coming across to this section, we see one hell of a lot of wheel suspensions, coming across some steel blocks, which is how we're going to get all of our wheels working together. We also see right above there, one hell of a lot of catwalks, which there is one hell of a lot of catwalks going around this thing, so you can get to every little nook and cranny on this vehicle, and we do have a lot of large atmospheric thrusters to push this thing around, which means we're going to be using one hell of a lot of power to make this thing work. Anyway, at the back here, on this piston, which is one of our stabilizers, we've got a ladder that allows us to come all the way up and onto our first little catwalk to start walking all the way around. So up and around onto this section, we've got some lovely creamy yellow blocks that go all the way around this vehicle, with a few bits of black here and there. Once we get up to this section, we're going to see some green neon tubes, which is a very important aspect of this vehicle. As you can see on this nose board right here, the doors can only be accessed when these green neon tubes match up with each other. So when this bottom half and bottom half are like they are right now, that means we can easily go in and out, find any kind of problems, or without it being blocked off. Anyway, coming up to these steps, opening up this doorway, it's now time to come into the massive mess that is the interior. So walking across this section, we see one hell of a lot of gyroscopes to make sure this thing can stay balanced when it's doing all of its work. It's time for me to walk up to here, up these steps. You might not be able to walk up these naturally, so you might have to do a little hop or use a jetpack like I just did. But this is the interior. So right above here, we can see our rotating fans that we talked about at the very start, at the very top of the vehicle. And around the room, one hell of a lot of catwalks and one hell of a lot of ways to go. So walking up to this section and just coming around into here. Like I said, you can build a fairly big base inside here if you want to. Put some large scale refineries, assemblies, medical bays, everything you can think of inside here. It'll definitely fit and would be very useful if you did want to use this in survival mode. But if you were using this in survival mode, you would have to spawn this in with creative tools. Anyway, lining the wall, one hell of a lot of gyroscopes on the side, and of course on the opposite side, a bunch of batteries to give it a bit of power. And walking around, you can see a few little windows appear outside. So back into here, through this little doorway, closing it up to mark where I've been. 
and head up some steps. So up to here, we're now going to come across some more catwalks to peer down at this lower section. We can see more batteries, then up to here, some more windows to peer outside of. Looking across over to the opposite end of this room, we can see our lovely fans just spinning around there. Of course, you can always remove these if you don't want them. They are purely there for decoration. So like I said, you can always flatten off the top, remove these fans, maybe even add a connection system, and linking all the way across to the front where the drill heads are sitting. Now time for me to come all the way down into this little section and walk all the way up these stairs. This is where it's going to get very confusing because there's plenty of doors on the outside, lots of steps that go up to different floors. They're all going to largely go to the same place. So on the side here, we can see some more cowboys going down and then further up. Looking up and across on the side of this, you can see even more places where we're going to come in and out. Now just walking up these steps. Here we go. And all the way around, then see some more walkways go to where we just were. It would then come across to the back of this place, but then got an arrow that opens up a door. And this would be basically what we just saw on the side, but look at the sheer number of pistons on that. That's an absolute massive amount to make this all work. And it's extremely impressive how this user has to actually set this all up to work. So it's absolutely flawless. There's no risk of this thing blowing up. It's just sheer perfection. Anyway, back through here, walking up these steps, all the way around, past this lovely grey column in the middle. Once again, some more catwalks to walk across. They'll go back over to our rotating fan in the middle. But this time, we want to come past, not to these doors, because these will once again go to our outside. We want to come up these steps, so then take us to our top platform, which is what we saw at the very back of this vehicle, which features all of our programmable blocks, feature our tank controls, our lifting controls, and of course our thruster control script. It basically allows you to use subgrid thrusters, which is a very handy thing that should really be part of the base game by now. Here we go, across this part, a bunch of time blocks. Then looking around here, it's a nice big open section, where we have once again some more cowboys, we can then view down with our spinning fans right below there. Anyway, that's the back of our drilling arm. And to make it, well, to try and show you the sheer scale of this thing, this is my character zooming all the way away. You can barely see my character compared to that arm. This thing is absolutely ginormous with its sheer scale. Onto this side, walk around. Once again, some sets go all the way down. More catwalks that lead all the way across. Now eventually go to the opposite side of where we just were on the inside. I do absolutely love walking around this section. Look at this sheer scale. We've got a bunch of pins and heads just lining this up with decoration. A bunch of rotor heads also for some decoration. A lot of spikes to light up the darkness. Then looking all the way down to there. It's just a sheer number of pistons that's really doing it for me on this. And it gets even better when I move it around. Which is where we're going to head to right now. So past all of this. Past our programmable blocks. Past our time blocks. Then come up to this section. Right next to the steps that we came up and through. We'll just open this up. We're going to be greeted with our cockpit. We've got a bunch of glass windows around the outside. So we can get a clear view of what's going on. We've got a bunch of armoured panels, once again in our yellowy, orangey coloured blocks. Just going around there to add it's a bit of decoration, break up all this glass. Getting to the cockpit, we have all our controls very handy listed up and above there. Then coming to the third person view, this is what it looks like when you're driving it around. It feels a lot smaller than it actually is when you're driving around the third person view, and it feels a lot slower than it should be, especially when we drive it around. So if I was press number 5, that's going to undo the magnetic plates below there, and lift up our pistons, and this allows us to drive around here, so moving forwards, you see our thrusters have now engaged, and we're going at quite a fast rate here. We're going up to about 30 meters per second. It won't take too long to reach 100 meters per second. If I just let go of it, again, it won't take too long to go back to 0 meters per second. So we've got the same thrusters, forwards and backwards, and of course we've got nothing inside it, so it's going to be fairly light. Although looking the sheer way of this thing, this thing is not light in general. But as for the actual controls for the drills, let me press number 5 again to lock this in place, and it's time for me to grab hold of the free camera and bring it all the way over. So we're going to look at it like so. I might need to adjust the sunlight so we can get a much clearer view of what's going on here. Let's just go ahead and do that. That'll have to do. Bring the camera around like so. There we go. Hiding that. It's now time for me to move the drilling arm. So just bring the camera slightly over to here. Then if we also press spacebar or C, what's going to happen is our drilling arm's now going to lift all the way up. Adjusting the camera slightly. We now go up to a mountain sign and just drill straight forwards into it. It was a press C, so I'm going to bring it all the way down. There we are. You do have to be a little bit careful with this. So if you were a bit too blasé with holding out space, it will just ping all the way up. And it does have a risk of this thing flipping over if you don't have the magnetic plates engaged. Let's go and do that right now. Hold down space. And then let go of it. The sheer amount of weight on that drilling arm is enough to flip over the vehicle. I'll just go and put it back down to how it was. There we go. For the other controls, once that's back in place, oop, I almost damaged something, or at least I felt like it damaged something. I now use the mouse to lift this up. And then move this down. 
Then of course if it was to spin this all the way around, just gotta lift it up slightly because I did slam it into the ground there. There we go. I can now press number six. That's gonna unlock our rotor in the middle. We now spin this a full 360. So now we've got perfect coverage of everything around us. We want to mine up a nice lot of resources. Bring that all the way back to how it was. Here we go. In fact, I'll extend that out just slightly there. There we go. Now it's time for me to do the final controls of moving this, where it's going to be Q and E. This is going to be to rotate our drilling head. Pressing Q, it's going to lift it all the way up. Then pressing E, it's now going to move it all the way down. There we go. Try and make it stop a little bit quicker so it doesn't damage itself. Moving the free camera over a bit more. Here we go. We'll go and look at it like so. Go and press Q and E once again. It says Q to lift it up. And then pressing E to move it all the way back down. Of course, for the other controls, naturally number two, number three is going to be to turn on and off our drills, and of course, to control it with our mouse. So, there we go now, drill everything up or right mouse button to make a big hole. But once we've gathered up enough resources with that, what we can do is then press number one. So, what that's going to do is now split open our drilling head to reveal to us all of our connectors, which is what I talked about at the very start. So, once we've got all the stuff we want to eject down, we open that up, drop it all off, or even use this as a general ejection point. So once you've got all the resources inside this thing, you now go across to say a general deposit area, drop it all into the collectors, and we'll have it as an easy way to pull everything out. Rather than having a ship come up to this, dock up to it and pull stuff out very slowly, do the sheer amount of stuff this can collect is a more ideal solution. Anyway, you press number one, it's gonna put it all the way back, and now we're ready to drill stuff up. So back into first person view, here we go. We've got some more controls to go through, but this time this is gonna be for our camera. So one and two to see it left and right of our drilling head. Then three and four is actually look up to see what's going on with those pistons. I'm going to come out of this first person view looking down. Now I'm going to move this all the way up. Here we go. We press spacebar to move it across. And of course we can rotate the head if we need to. But what I want to do is now bring this all the way down to the ground. Over to tab number one. It's time for me to take over the drill and start to drill up this ground here. It's going to be a bit clangy as we move down. I will need to rotate the head slightly so we can get a bit more stuff going on. And of course I want to extend it all the way out. Looks like it was a little bit too rough with this, so I have damaged it slightly. It is a bit hard to see in first person view, so may need to actually spawn in a brand new one. But here we go, we see all the collectors are now ejecting out all the stone because we don't need it. And looking at it, it looks like we have just generally damaged the back of the head. Open that up. Yeah, it was all of that like, damage. So what I am going to do now is spawn in a brand new one and try that one more time, but this time a little bit more carefully using the third person camera. And here we go, I spawned in a brand new one, brought it over to a mountainside because it's time for me to actually extend this arm all the way out. So we can actually reach across over to that actual proper rock to collect it all up. So using the static camera, it's time for me to press spacebar to lift this all the way up. And of course press Q, bring this all the way down. In fact, I need to press E because that was the wrong button. There we go. And now I need to pull this all the way down. And there we go, that looks like about as far as we can go with extending the arm all the way out. That looks absolutely perfect for me to grab hold of this once again. Third person view, undo our magnet plates, here we go. And drive it all the way forwards and come up to the mountainside. What I am going to do is press number three to activate the drills. So we can very slowly come all the way up to it and clear up any kind of resources that get into our way. And here we are in the first person view. I mean, so the camera view, that's all we can see. We can rotate this around because we do have the movable camera mod. And of course, we can come into the higher up camera, rotate it all the way down, so we can see what's going on. I would prefer to have a camera on the actual drilling head to see how far away I am from the actual wall. But what I am going to do now is just come all the way up like so. Third person view, if I can get out of the camera view. There we go. Now it's time to very carefully come over to tab number one, activate our piercings, lock myself in place. So it's time to collect up all of this stone. So you see there, our piercings are now coming all the way down. There we go. We're now locked in place. Bring the free camera all the way over. And now it's time for me to properly control this and say tilt this all the way down to start collecting up all of this stone right below me. And there we go, being a little bit more careful this time. It is quite hard to judge how far this thing is actually going to move because there is a lot of weight behind it. So when you start to rotate it, it will follow through quite a lot, very much like a very heavy ship. Coming all the way around like so. There we go. Rotating this all the way down once again. Look at the sheer number of drills on that. And here we go. We can hear a lot of sound there because it is ejecting out all its own because there is no actual resources on the surface in this general area. And just very carefully moving it all the way around. There we are. Bring the free camera over so we can see what's going on with these connectors right there. It seems like we are collecting one hell of a lot of stuff inside, but of course the cleanup tool has been enabled and it's very rapidly cleaning up all up. 
Looking down to here, there's all of our drills working fantastically. And once I'm done, all I need to do now is just pull this all the way back up by pressing C. There we go, pulling it all the way down, rotating the head all the way around. We now just spin this all the way around for all 360 if we need to do that. Look at all the stone just spilling out of there. And once I'm happy, back over to this, round like so, taking over once again. I can now press number one, I can open up, rotate that around once again. Now I can just eject out all of the stone. But it looks like it has finished ejecting out all the stone before I managed to open that up. Yes, that's all you do. Now everything will be shut out. But yes, out of that, that's pretty much it. The Miner TS-8000 is a bloody fantastic giant miner to use in your world. You do want to have something very large, very destructive, with a hell of a lot of stuff going on with it. It's very impressive for how it's all been set up, and I highly recommend downloading it to check it out to see how it's all functioning. And of course, like I said, you can use this in survival mode if you want to spawn this in. Really fit the entire interior to actually have a survival base inside. Put some guns around the outside for a little bit of defense against the pesky drones. And you'll have yourself a fantastic long-term vehicle to use in your adventure. Yes, as for that, like I said, that's pretty much it for this thing and what it has to offer. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you wish to download and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.